a perfect time then to bring in uh, our guest, uh, Cornelia Meyer, uh, who is the chair person and CEO of Meyer Resource. She joins us live from Bern. Cornelia, thank you very much indeed for hanging on there. We just thought we should dip into to Ned Price to see what he had to say. He was announcing more sanctions, and that's exactly what I wanted to ask you about. So of all the sanctions we've heard announced against Russia in the last couple of days, which ones do you think will hit Russia the hardest? Well, you know, I think what, what will hit Russia hard is when they can no longer go to the capital markets for their sovereign debt, which the Europeans have done, when banks are getting cut out, which we've seen, uh, especially the British do, and, and, and some of the Europeans and the Americans. So that really hurts. We've seen that with Iran as well. That's, you know, when Iran got cut out of SWIFT, that was really what hurt. Um, Nord Stream 2, yes, it hurts because, as um, uh, Mr. Price said, you know, they have $11 billion in there. Mind you, it's not just Russian money, it's also German money. They also, Germany, it's, it's a joint venture, there's also German money in there. So that will hit Russia. Um, but, um, but, but really, the, 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 the banking side, I think, will hit, will hit Russia the hardest. On the banking uh, side, we have heard that the SWIFT banking system may be brought into play here by excluding Russia from that. Just explain what that actually is and, and how that would affect Russia. Well, that, what that is, the SWIFT banking system is how you settle. Um, you know, when you make a bank transfer, it always, there's always a SWIFT number, right? That's how you settle international bank transfers. And obviously, when you do commerce, you need that, and it's especially pertinent for dollars, right? You have to, that's very hard, that's very hard. And even if other currencies are allowed, banks will be very reluctant, Western banks will be very reluctant to engage with a country which is cut out of SWIFT, because that will have ramifications on how they can operate in the world's largest financial market, which is the US. Again, I'm taking the, 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 the Iranian example here, because, you know, there, there were all sorts of um, ideas on how to get around um, the SWIFT system. And the bank said, well, that's nice, but um, our most important market is the United States, so we will not go along with this. So that's essentially, that essentially would hurt. Well, would these do seem like fairly uh, strong, severe sanctions. However, Russia has been fairly dismissive of the sanctions. Uh, Russians lived with them before, that's what they're saying. Uh, do you think there is a way that Russia can circumvent these sanctions? Russia cannot circumvent the sanctions, but Russia will just do trade with other with other countries. You know, it will be a, a big boost on on a, a Russia, a Sino Russian trade, for instance. So they will do more trade with with um, with the with with the with the with with the Chinese. And then you have to also see that when you look at the situation of gas in Europe, right? Russia is it, it, Europe imports between forty and fifty percent of its gas via pipelines from Russia that you cannot just get immediately other sources of gas and a lot of people heat with that gas. So I don't think you can totally cut them out because I don't think any government, especially the governments who really heavily depend on Russian gas um, for, for heating, um, I don't think they will at this point, it's, it's, it's a rather cold winter, they will in the dead of winter do that. So that's, that's, that's something. The third thing I would like to say Says. I looked um, just before to prepare for your interview at the foreign reserves. They're quite big, seven, 670 billion, and um, only about 10% are in dollar. The rest is in other currencies, and there's a lot of gold in there. So Russia has, over the last since 2014, prepared um, to be to decouple itself more from 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 the U.S. system. Which is yet another sign that perhaps Vladimir Putin's been planning this for a lot longer than just a year or two. Um, what does all this uncertainty mean for the global financial markets? And looking ahead, because there are, of course, other international uh, factors at play for the oil and the gas markets. 
Well, I think it, well, well, for the financial markets, uncertainty, you know, markets don't like uncertainty. And you saw what the Dow does, whatever, what the Dow does, what the, what the S&P 500 do, what the Asian markets do. When there's uncertainty, when there's war looming, they go down because, I mean, if, you know, equities are are um, risk on are risk on type um, 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 securities and um, and and um, and when you see when you when when war is looming you go into a risk of sentiment coming to oil we have an incredibly tight market you saw it you know you saw it go up so it hit a um, hundred um, uh, for a short while yesterday so we're we're, we're seeing uh, uh, we're seeing oil prices going up and what we see is there is just after the pandemic the, the economic recover, uh, recovery was faster than expected and the producers of OPEC plus have not been able to quite produce as much as, um, as, as as was expected especially Russia is one of them and a lot of the African countries so we will need the Saudi crude we will need the the, the UAE crude we will hope that we will see the US come back again at these prices there is also the Iranian crude, because if the Vienna negotiations, um, the, the, the nuclear negotiations uh, go well, then we could potentially see another 1.2 million barrels a day from Iran. But mind you, that framework is P5 plus one. That means the permanent five members of the UN Security Council and Germany. And, you know, Russia is a permanent member and currently this month actually chairing the Security Council. Yeah, well, Russia is, and that complicates uh, how the UN uh, deals with this this whole situation. Final one, Cornelia, just going back to the sanctions. Um, it's all very well for the United States, uh, the EU, Great Britain to announce these sanctions, but clearly there may well be uh, a financial impact on those countries, on the Western countries. What sort of risk is there uh, to those countries of, 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 of imposing sanctions on Russia? Well, you know, if you see if you see oil prices, for instance, spike higher, we have inflationary pressures. If we see if we see things spiking higher, let's say if oil prices go up by another 20 percent, we could well see inflation rates in the U.S. go to about 10 percent, which means the interest rates go up, which obviously you know, sucks the life out of the economy when interest rates go up too quickly. So, yes, there, there is a price to be paid. And then there are other countries like Germany who do trade with Russia. Who, 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 these companies will, will also will also, you know, suffer. And again, the guys who want who want to be heated and need Russian gas will probably not be very happy if the prices get so terribly high. Cornelia, it's been fascinating talking to you. Thank you very much for your analysis. That is Cornelia Meyer there, Chairman and CEO of Meyer Resources. Thank you very much indeed.